Hi, Tom Lippincott here, and this is another edition of Modern Jazz Noise. Today's edition, I'm looking for a reverb pedal that can replace my old Lexicon LXP1 half rack reverb that's been a mainstay for me for many years, uh, but it's getting kind of old, and I like to, for smaller gigs, use both reverb and delay, so I'll bring this big chunky half rack size reverb and a reverb pedal. So that's two things I have to bring. And since there's a lot of reverb pedals out there that also include delay, I thought, well, maybe I could find one that does that. Uh, with that in mind, I did some research and looked up a bunch of different reverb pedals and I came up with three finalist contenders. Um, so I'm looking for basically a reverb that can come close to emulating uh, the LXP1. Uh, the reason that I love this reverb so much is it's got that big, expansive, warm, I, I, I hesitate to use the word, but I can't think of a better word, spooky kind of sound um, that's reminiscent of a lot of modern jazz players that I love. People like uh, Bill Frizzell, Ben Monder, and Kurt Rosenwinkel have all use the LXP1 in the past and I consider it to be a you know a big part of that kind of modern jazz sound if that's what you're talking about by modern jazz is players like that and some of the younger players that have come along after them. For many years I used the LXP1 on a pedal board and I would actually stack pedals on top of it but it was always a little bit awkward and hard to kind of get to the controls so eventually I uh, decided to update it and got a, a more modern pedal. The first one I tried was the Eventide Space, which I had really high hopes for. Uh, and uh, while it did have a lot of great things about it that I loved, particularly the soundscapey, you know, real vibey, psychedelic kind of sounding reverbs, the regular reverb sound, particularly the hall reverb, I just didn't dig on the Eventide Space at all. Um, and I'll get into talking about the pre-delay specifically on the main part of the video, but that was one of the things I didn't like about the uh, Eventide Space. So later on I got a, a Strymon Big Sky, which I immediately loved. I was able to get a pretty good emulation of the LXP1, and that's been a mainstay on my pedal board for quite a while, but for smaller gigs that I don't want to have to bring the pedal board for, uh, I've still been just bringing the LXP1 and a delay pedal. So this uh, video today is all about my search for a, a modern a reverb and delay pedal that can eliminate the need to bring both of those pedals and maybe finally retire the old LXP1, send it off to the uh, old digital reverb folks home so they can have a well-deserved retirement. I've got a few requirements for a reverb pedal. Uh, one is they must have a hall setting and it must be something that you know purports to be uh, an emulation of 80s style digital reverbs. Another big one for me is it must be in stereo. Now this is something that has puzzled me uh, for a long time about the profusion of digital reverb pedals that are out there that are not stereo. I just I just don't get it. I mean I I, I do understand that lots of guitar players play with just one amp and, and they don't play in stereo, but it just seems to me if you're going to have a digital reverb pedal, that should automatically be an option. It's just such an important part of the sound of a digital reverb to me. Um, unless you're only trying to emulate maybe like a, a spring reverb, which I know there are some pedals that specifically specialize in that, great. But otherwise, I just don't get the point of a reverb pedal in any way, shape, or form that doesn't have stereo options. So that immediately took a whole bunch of pedals off the table. Um, the second thing that I, or the third thing that I want was uh, for it to also have a delay. And the delay that I've been using is the Boss DD6, which is just a pretty basic Boss digital delay doesn't have to have you know any kind of real special thing to it just provide some a, a tiny little bit of echo in the background that I like to have uh, when my I'm using my kind of everyday jazz tone um, another couple of things I'm looking for another kind of requirement is I want something with 
tree delay. That's something that I'm really fond of in the LXP1. The fact that it's got this pre-delay control, which means that when you play a note or a chord, it takes just a second for the reverb to kick in the way that it would in a real big hall space. And then finally, I'm also looking for something that is small, light, and maybe easy, simple to use. Versatility is a plus, I guess. I certainly, you know, not something that I'm, I'm trying to stay away from, but at the same time, my use of a reverb pedal is pretty much the way I described. I don't have a whole lot of use for a, a pedal that has a whole bunch of different features. It's great, it's a nice, you know, extra option, but if I really want that, I'll pull out my pedal board and use my uh, Strymon Big Sky for that. So I'm really just looking for something that's pretty basic, even though I'm very picky about the actual reverb sound that I'm looking for. So without further ado, let's check out uh, the LXP1 itself and compare that to my three contenders that I came up with, which were the Red Panda Context, the Source Audio Collider, and the Universal Audio Delverb. Here is just my basic guitar sound. I'm playing, of course, my uh, Conklin 8 string, and um, I've got it going right now through two solid state amps. One is a Mark Jazz 12, which is my kind of main amp that I use when I do smaller gigs and, and I often use it uh, in bigger situations or maybe in stereo with another amp. And then uh, I've got a stereo pair right now running. The other amp is an old ZT Club. It's a, a 112 cabinet, you know, compact amp. For anybody who's familiar with the ZT Lunchbox amps, this is kind of the big brother of that amp. And both of these amps are pretty, you know, uh, neutral sounding amps. Uh, they stay clean at just about any volume and uh, they work great for jazz. So so I'm using the, that as sort of my basis for my sound and here's just my basic guitar sound with no effects at all. <laughs> That's just my kind of dark jazz tone that I like to play with a lot of the time. Sometimes I'll mix in a little bit of my piezo pickup to get a little bit of brightness if I'm playing a lot of chordal stuff. And I want to be able to hear the individual notes and the chords better. Anyway, so what I typically would add to that is the LXP1. Now here I have the mix control down all the way. Now I'll bring it in and this is about what I might usually use on a gig. That actually, the mix is a little high. That's probably closer. Now one thing, one kind of mistake that I hear a lot of people make when they're either demoing reverbs or trying them out is, you know, I'll hear them say, okay, this is this real nice expansive sounding reverb. Let me tr play a couple things. I'm playing all these real long sustainy kind of chordal things. And I, there's no room in there to hear the sound of the reverb. If you really want to hear what a reverb sounds like, you need to play something short. Then, only then can I really hear that decay, the reverb trailing off. And even, even more specifically, if I just hit the string percussively, then I can really zero in on what that, just the sound of the reverb itself. So a couple of things that I want, I want to point out about this reverb sound is it's very warm and lush. And uh, to tell you the truth, the, the, the sort of aha moment that I had with reverb was back when I was in college, I worked in the recording studio at the school that I was going to. And um, they, I had access to a lot of the, you know, concert halls and so forth. And there was this one kind of smaller hall called the Recital Hall. This was at University of North Texas. I think it's still there, that Recital Hall. <clears throat> and um, 
I, I just can remember standing on that stage and playing my classical guitar and just hearing this beautiful, sumptuous uh, reverberation coming naturally from the hall. And I've been chasing after that sound ever since. And this lexicon, LXP1, comes the closest that anything ever has to sounding, kind of getting the sound of that, um, of that natural reverb. Now, a lot of people will say that the 80s digital reverb is not a natural reverb sound. It's a very specific thing, and maybe that's true. But to me, this it just, it just got that magic sound to it. The other component of this sound that to me is extremely important is the pre-delay. And this knob right here on the LXP1 says delay. If I turn it all the way as, as high as it will go, you can really pronouncedly hear the pre-delay. Hear how it takes a split second for the reverb to start at all. Now that's really exaggerated. I wouldn't usually, you know, have it that extreme, but it's a little more natural sounding now, but there's this little bit of space between when I hit a note and when the reverb comes back and starts, you know, kind of uh, the ambience kicks in. And I feel like that gives me a little bit of more space to, to uh, give the notes space so that they don't get lost in the reverb as much. The fact that it's a fairly dark sound, the, the actual preset on here, on this knob that I'm using is the dark hall. That's my favorite one. There's all kinds of different sounds here, small, medium, large, uh, those are all, you know, different size rooms, and there's these special effects, gated, chorus, delay, different other effects, plate reverb sound. But by far, I mean, I never even stray away from the dark hall. That's just always my go-to sound. Um, <clears throat> the other thing that I have heard people do, or the mistake that I've heard before, this second knob from the end here is decay. That just means how long the tail of the reverb is. Let's see what happens if I make it a lot less. Okay, now it, it, it dies away really quickly. And if, if I didn't know any better and I heard this sound, I'm like, oh, it, it really doesn't sound very big and expansive, so I must need more reverb in there, right? Well, now I've got this you know, a whole bunch of reverb with a really short decay time. It just sounds like I'm in, a, I'm in a bathroom or something. And you stop, you stop being able to hear the notes that I'm playing because there's so much reverb in the mix. If you want to get a, that sumptuous, expansive sound, what you want is less reverb in the mix, but a longer decay time. play fast flurries of notes, it doesn't get quite so lost in the, that reverb. Might even turn it down a little bit in the mix. But now it's got that sound of largeness and I don't know how else to describe it, warmth and sumptuousness. One thing that I have realized in doing these A-B comparisons is uh, because the technology in the LXP1 is so old, I guess the, um, the sample rate or whatever you want to call it, I, I don't know a whole lot about the electronics, but basically when you mix in the reverb with your guitar sound, I'll, I'll demonstrate this by turning my tone knob on my guitar all the way up so I get a really bright tone. Now let's see what happens if I bring the mix all the way down to where I'm. And again, with the mix on, I'll even put a It's a subtle thing. 
when the mix is all the way to the, I'm just, you know, getting the original signal, there's actually a little bit more high-end response that you hear from the guitar signal. And I'm, I'm pretty convinced that that's just because the technology is older. Um, years ago, uh, guitarist Ben Monder told me that he had his LXP1 modified by a company to sort of update the audio specs to modern standards. And I, I have a feeling that's exactly what he was talking about. I never bothered to do that because I was happy with the way it sounded as is. But I've realized that over the years, I've sort of gotten used to that attenuation of the highs. And the first couple of times I used one of these other pedals on a gig just to try it out, it was kind of disconcerting because it, I felt like I had, my guitar sounded almost naked because I had that extra high-end presence that I wasn't used to. It, it's kind of, you know, this, it's almost like the sound of the lexicon unit warms up the sound of the guitar a little bit in addition to giving you the reverb. And it's kind of a strange thing. Um, I think, you know, the, in popular parlance, a lot of people say they use that term tone suck when they're talking about, uh, you know, uh, putting your signal through something that attenuates the high end. And I'm kind of with Nels Klein when it comes to that concept where, you know, he says he puts his guitar through, you know, gazillions of pedals. And uh, I heard somebody ask him, you know, how, don't you worry about your, you know, tone being uh, adversely affected by this? And he says, no, I mean, I just figure that's the sound of my guitar. I, you know, I put it through all these pedals and what it sounds like at the end is what it sounds like. And I'm, I'm happy with that. And I kind of feel the same way. You know, if uh, my high end gets attenuated a little bit, that doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad thing. And if I want to add it back in, I can use an EQ pedal or EQ the amp to, to put back the high end. So, but, but I kind of, I guess as a jazz player too, because a lot of the time I'm, I'm playing with a warmer sound, I'm usually looking for, you know, a warmer kind of tone. So a lot of time high frequencies can, can be my enemy. I'm, you know, I don't, I don't want to get that really bright, piercing kind of tone. That's why I do use, I roll my tone knob off for single note line. That just sounds really ugly to me. Whereas if I roll the tone off, I get this. Just sounds more like a horn to me. And that's kind of, I think, what most jazz guitar players are going for when we play single note lines in particular, is to get a more horn-like, lyrical kind of sound. Okay, so anyway, enough, uh, <laughs> enough being on the soapbox about this. And I will now come down off my soapbox. So now let's check out a few of these pedals. So, I'm, first thing I'm gonna do is turn the mix down on the Lex P1, so now it's just back to totally dry. Now, I have created presets and or, you know, combinations of, of knobs on all three pedals that come as close as I think I've been able to get to sounding like the LXP1. So, starting with the Red Panda Context, turn this on here. Now, you will notice You can hear just a, a little hint of delay of the echo. You can kind of hear it. It's a, I think I actually increased the level of it a little bit so that you could really hear it. Now the one kind of, uh, well, okay, first of all, spoiler, I'm pretty sure that the context is gonna be the winner in this shootout. I've, I've tried it on a couple of gigs and I've, you know, compared all three of them with the LXP1. And I really feel like the, uh, the reverb, the basic hall reverb sound on the context comes pretty close to the LXP1. Not exact, but close enough that, you know, it, it's really impressed me. Um, one of the, the really important things to me, as I mentioned before, is that pre-delay sound. And, um, I'll, I'll come back to this in a few minutes, but um, the, uh, the pre-delay on the context sounds the most like the lexicon of any of these three pedals. 
And what I mean by that, and let me go back for a second to the LXP1. And um, particularly if I bring the pre-delay really long. So in addition to it taking a second for the reverb to kick in, notice that when it does come in, it's, it doesn't come in all of a sudden. It's not just like total silence and then tons of reverb. It kind of fades in gently, which is what a real space sounds like to my ear. And again, going back to remembering, you know, being in that beautiful sounding concert hall. I remember it sounding like that. A, so many of the reverb pedals that, and just effects that I've tried that have pre-delay uh, one example being the Eventide Space, which I had for a while, and, and it's a great pedal. It, it makes these otherworldly sounds like nothing else I've ever heard, but just the basic hall reverb that I was trying to, you know, kind of get the LXP1 vibe was not happening, and one of the big problems was the pre-delay was just nothing and then everything. And it almost sounded like a delay, like an echo. You know, you'd hear, you play the note, and then there'd be silence, and then all of a sudden, the delay would be all the way on suddenly, and it would be this jarring kind of entrance of the delay. Well, what I've noticed is, like the, uh, my second pedal here, the Source Audio Collider, has a little bit of that itis, that, you know, that problem where the pre-delay comes in a little too suddenly. It's not as bad as the space was. It does fade in a little bit, but the context really has a nice gentle fade in of the pre-delay, and I love that about it. So let's check that out a little bit. Um, so again, here's the context preset that I made. Now maybe that right now this isn't a totally fair comparison because I do have the delay mixed in. Here's one big disadvantage of the context. This is probably the uh, not nearly as programmable as some pedals, some digital pedals. The collider definitely has it over the context in that respect. And even the, the del verb over here, which I'll get to in a minute, um, has a little bit more flexibility when it comes to reverb and delay separate from each other. The only way to control the delay is to hit this shift button right here, and then all of the functions of the knobs change to adjust the sound of the, of the delay. So now I've got the, uh, the shift button down, and I'm bringing this knob up here to change to what, right now you're only going to hear the delay or the echo. So now you can really clearly hear that echo. There's no reverb at all. So that's what I'm talking about by a little tiny bit of reverb. And again, this may be, even be a little bit more of the, of the echo than I might use in a real context. Same problem if I play a bunch of notes. You hear a little too much of the echo and it interferes a little bit with the notes that I'm playing. But anyway, for the purposes of demonstrating the reverb on this pedal, I'm gonna turn the knob all the way the other way, and now I'm just hearing the reverb, no delay at all. And now let's do a little A-B comparison between the LXP1 and the context. So here's context. And LXP1. Again, not, not exactly the same, but pretty damn close. And notice how, with the context, my guitar sound sounds, I guess one way to describe it was a little more alive. It kind of leaps out at me a little bit more, whereas it's a little more dull with the LXP1 which is nice, it's, it's, uh, it's kind of nice and warm and enveloping, but it's kind of refreshing to hear sort of more of a high fidelity version of my guitar tone, I guess you could say. And when I have used this pedal on a few gigs, uh, it was a little bit you know, disconcerting at first. I think I mentioned that before. And once I got used to it, 
I kind of liked that new <laughs> high fidelity kind of sound. Okay, so now let's look at the pre-delay setting here. Again, I've got it set, you know, just a little bit, but what if I... Okay, so there is extreme pre-delay. And hear that? It's actually, even though I've got it all the way up, it, it, I don't have as much, as long of a pre-delay as the LXP-1 offers. But again, I would never use this much. But notice how the way it fades in is nice and gentle. And that is, I just love that. That's, you know, a really important thing to me. Um, now, one thing that is a little bit of a limitation with this pedal, I mentioned the sort of the flexibility. In addition to having to hit that shift button to change any of the settings on the delay, you, without using, um, you know, MIDI, which it will do, you can hook up, you know, MIDI to this, you can hook up an expression pedal, you can do that with all three of these pedals. And, but without doing any of that, you can create exactly one preset. And I do have a preset saved in here. So there's no echo. And there's just a little bit of echo. And maybe a little bit l lower reverb in the mix even. So, you know, you basically could have the equivalent of having two different sounds, one preset and one what you see is what you get with the knobs. That's the one thing about this pedal that I don't like. Um, one other thing that I thought was worth mentioning is just the aesthetics, the visual aesthetics. I know this is kind of, in a way, maybe that's kind of stupid and saying, you know, you buy a, a pedal for the way it sounds, not the way it looks. But there is a certain design element, I think, when I, when I look at a pedal, you know, some pedals, I just look at them and they, they look really beautiful and it makes me want to check them out and see what's going on. And then other pedals just look kind of boring and ugly and it kind of, you know, puts me off a little bit. And I have to say that the, I love the design and the way everything looks on the context. The, the, I, know, I love the name Red Panda, that's a cool name. The, the name of the pedal itself, the context, that's a cool name. Um, and I just love the, you can't probably see it on the video, but there's these little uh, uh, raised designs all over the pedal. And um, just, you know, everything about it is just really cool looking. The knobs themselves look kind of vintagey which, you know, gives you more that vintage vibe that, uh, you know, I'm looking for that and the sound of it. And then if I compare that to the Collider, the Collider has more of a, like, I don't know, futuristic sci-fi kind of look to it. And to me, it, it just feels kind of cold a little bit. The, everything from, you know, the, the box itself to the, the knobs to the, the font that they use, uh, the brushed metal aluminum. Now I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to harsh on these guys that they're a great company, Source Audio, and uh, everything they make has that sort of signature look to it. Uh, but it just, it doesn't necessarily resonate with me as much and it doesn't invite me in and make me want to check this pedal out right away. So um, again, the spoiler is I, you know, I, I'm probably going to choose this one in the end. But I have to admit, maybe a little bit of that was a, a little bit of prejudice that was based on the way this pedal looks, just didn't invite me in. Um, the Del Verb is maybe somewhere in the middle. It's definitely got a really cool vintagey vibe to it, but it's huge. It's the heaviest of the three. The context is actually the lightest, and that's another thing that, that attracts me about it. You know, I'm looking for uh, portability and just something that's really easy to, to set up and tear down and carry around. And this thing is a, a brick. Um, this is a little, you know, kind of halfway in between the two. Now, this is the least programmable of any of the pedals. There's no presets on this whatsoever. But what you do have that's cool is a separate reverb and delay on off. You, cannot, you can also set the, the tap tempo for the reverb, and, but then that means you, you can't use the reverb, I believe. Uh, for me, that's totally not important. Um, one thing I forgot to mention at the beginning is uh, these, this demo that I'm doing, this kind of shootout, is not meant in any way, shape, or form to be an exhaustive demonstration of any one of these three pedals. Um, or really a comparison of the three to each other. 
all I'm doing is I'm looking to get the sound of the LXP1 or at least something like that for my use when I play jazz to and I want a, a reverb that can you know kind of satisfy the my desire to have at least something close to that sound plus have a little bit of delay and I, I, I get mentioned before that the delay is not that critical to me as long as it sounds like a delay like you heard in the context the the delay in the context is pretty basic it doesn't give you a whole lot of different options um, but it, it does but I mean it you know it's got modulation it's got uh, feedback and um, you can control I think the highs and lows of the delay uh, but it doesn't emulate you know a tape delay and a, a analog delay and all that kind of stuff the way that these other ones do so if I was looking for let's say a really just all around delay and reverb pedal that had lots of variety and lots of great sounds and lots of programmability i probably would choose the source audio collider that one has a lot of different sounds a lot of programmability um, and it sounds great it, all, i you know i didn't try any of the presets that i thought sounded bad and you can see on here i've for the delays i've got digital analog tape reverse oil can and then for uh, reverbs, I've got room, hall, true spring, spring emulation, plate, shimmer, e-dome, and swell. So some of these kind of special effects reverbs are in here, which the context doesn't really have. Context has room, hall, cathedral, which is a really big, uh, expansive sounding hall. Maybe it's somewhat comparable to the e-dome in the collider. Uh, gate, reverse, plate, spring, grain. I will say that I, I checked out the spring reverb and I didn't really think it sounded that good in this pedal. The spring reverb on this one's good. The Delverb has, to me, the best spring emulation, if that's what you're looking for as a spring reverb, and I'll demonstrate that a little bit later. But let's um, check out the Collider a little bit now. So again, as I mentioned, this has a few more uh, bells and whistles than the Context does, and it's got more programmability. Four presets right here that I can either select with this button or I can use my delay on off slash tap switch, hold it down and it'll move from preset to preset. And I have created a preset here that is, again, I'm trying to emulate the sound of the LXP1. One thing that's a little bit disconcerting with this is this is a double duty switch delay on off plus tap tempo. And if you hit it quickly, it, you have to hit it, I think three times in succession, it'll give you the tap tempo. And if you want to turn the delay on or off, you have to hit it a little bit longer. Let's see. Oh, now see, now it's doing presets and I don't want that. I just want to turn the delay on. There we go. <laughs> Also, this is kind of a cool thing here. This switch, if it's in the middle, none of these knobs do anything. The, in other words, whatever they were at when you put it in, the, in this setting, that's the way they'll stay. Um, if I put it on where it says reverb, then the knobs will control the reverb. And if I put it over to the delay, the knobs will control the delay. Uh, so, you know, it, it's a little bit like the context that way, but at least I don't have to hold down a switch while I'm doing the delay settings. I can just set it and say, okay, that's going to be all the delay stuff. Um, so anyway, I'm going to put it on reverb, and the preset that I have here has a lot of reverb. And again, that's probably more than I would want to use if I was, you know, playing it. kind of getting in the way a bit, so I'll bring it down in the mix. Now let's do a little A-B with this one, turn the delay back off, and here's just the reverb. And here's the reverb on the LXP-1. Collider. Maybe it's a little too far back. Now. Just a little bit 
warmer and more expansive of a sound with this, with the LXP one. And furthermore, let's check out the pre-delay here. So now I, I've brought the mix way up on the reverb so it's easier to hear it. And I'm, I'm way putting the pre-delay as long as it'll go. It doesn't hit you in the face the way the Eventide Space does, but there, you can hear like a little bit comes in and then all of it comes in. So it's, there's a little bit of grain at the beginning of it, but it's still a little much for my taste. It, it's a little too sudden. And even when I bring it, dial it back, bring it back in the mix. It's very subtle. It's a very subtle difference, but it's there. I can't unhear it. You know? Now what is really cool is the delay on this thing. It's, again, it's got a lot of different options. I, I ended up, I'll just put the delay on. And you can hear it's got a stereo ping pong thing going on. So that's kind of cool. And I'm using the analog delay setting, so it's kind of a warm delay. It's got a little tiny bit of modulation to it. Although to be honest, I'm not sure if I would always want ping pong delay. If I'm even if I'm playing in stereo, I might necessarily always want that. I don't know. But as far as I can tell, you don't have any control over that. Like I said, I'm I'm not in any way, shape, or form planning on going through all of the different possibilities with this delay pedal. There's plenty of videos online that demonstrate all the different cool stuff that this thing can do. But uh, I did think I'd be remiss if I didn't, you know, try at least one thing. So I just, I found one setting that I thought was pretty cool and made a preset with it, which is this one. And I'm gonna brighten up my tone quite a bit because it's a little more of a poppy kind of a sound. It's very, um, it's very, uh, so that's a reverse delay plus with the reverb on. That's that E dome. So that's a really cool sound, really evocative and beautiful. for a real moody solo guitar intro or something like that, but definitely not a everyday use kind of a sound, more of a special effect kind of a thing. Um, but like I said, this, this thing has a ton of sounds in it. And if you're just, you've got a small pedal board and, and you're just kind of a typical guitar player, you're not some crazy weirdo like me that is chasing after this Lexicon LXP1 sound, you're happy with you know decent sounding reverbs and delays and you like having a little bit of flexibility and programmability this thing could really save you some space on your pedal board for sure and can do a lot of different cool things and it's also got fully you know midi functionality so you've got a, a midi controller you can do even more stuff with it and it's got expression pedal in and out uh, out sorry and another cool thing i forgot to mention about this one is in the package itself, the box, they give you not just the pedal, but they give you AC adapter, which the other pedals don't come with, cable for the um, controller pedal for the expression pedal and a cool little guitar pick, and a cable for uh, a USB to connect it to your computer. All, uh, I think all these except for the context have like an app that you know you can use so that's that's another really cool thing with the source audio one i, I think source audio is is really known for a lot of bang for your buck 
kind of stuff in their pedals and, and this pedal is no exception. So even though this isn't the one that I chose, I, I don't want to give short shrift to Source Audio because it's a great pedal. Okay, so now on to this last one, the Delverb. I have to say, for specifically for my use, this is my least favorite of the three. I was real excited about this because of the you know dual switches e easily. Like sometimes I just want to turn the delay off really quickly and leave the reverb on. And um, Universal Audio, of course, has really good reputation for sound quality. And this is uh, these emulations of a lot of these classic reverb and delay sounds. So what I've realized that this pedal is, is it's got a lot of uh, possibilities with delay. There is This switch gives you three basic sort of flavors, tape, analog, and precision, which is basically just like a digital delay. Um, I've, the one that I settled on that, you know, if I was going to use this, I use is the analog again, nice warm sounding delay. Here it is by itself. So nice and crunchy. I'll bring my tone back down to a kind of jazz. So you hear a little hair on the tone there. That's really nice and dark doesn't get in the way of my guitar tone. So I love that delay. And, and again, it's got all these other possibilities, tape. And again, I'm just gonna really, you know, gloss over this precision, the digital. You can hear some uh, chorusing on the delay. Okay, but the, the analog, so we got delay time, feedback, mix, which I obviously have down really low. And again, no programmability on here, so what you see is what you get. Color, which, you know, tone color of the, re of the delay. Modulation control. And here is the thing, the, the, the thing that really uh, makes this one the loser for me is what controls control the reverb? One knob, this one. All it does is if you turn the reverb on, it's a level control for the reverb. Off, full, you know, no, no dry signal, which of course I always appreciate that capability. And then, you know, the, the kind of usable range here. Um, now, in this pedal's defense, it also comes with a, uh, iOS or Android app where you can go into the app and let's see if I can get this going here. On my iPad I've got this app going and what this allows me to do is to change the reverb sounds in here. Right now I've got large hall B spacious. I've gone through all of these different uh, presets here and, and that's the one that sounds the closest to my ear to the LXP1, but I've got all these other possibilities here. I'll turn the, the reverb level up and, and try a few of these different sounds. Hallelujah stack verbs. A little brighter tone so you can hear the reverb a little more clearly. Orbiting light. So one of these real, that's, that's a super cool sounding reverb for, you know, special effects. Miggy, pingy mid pre-delay. So that does have some pre-delay. I think that's the only one in here that had pre-delay. So that was another one that kind of, you know. Fractal Forest is that one. Here's Default 224 Hall. It's an emulation of, I forget what reverb model it is, but it's like a late 70s, one of the very early digital delays. It's, it's cool, but it's not really comparable to the LXP1. So any, anyway, Large Hall B Spaces was the one that sounds closest to my ear to the LXP1, but, but no pre-delay. So definitely a, lo a loser, not to say, again, not to say that, you know, this pedal, is, if there's anything wrong with it, but for my specific uses, definitely doesn't cut it. Um, too many, you know, things that it doesn't check. It's big and heavy. 
no programmability, only one control for the reverb unless you go into the app, and even then it's all just presets. And incidentally, the, uh, the delays also have some presets, so there's quite a bit of flexibility. If what you're looking for is a pedal delay with a lot of flexibility and then you don't care that much about reverb, you just want a little bit here and there and you know, you're not that picky about it, this might be a good pedal for you. But for me, I'm just the opposite. Uh, I guess I, again, just to be fair, I'll do an A-B comparison between the LXP-1 and the Delverb. LXP-1. It does compare pretty favorably, just in the basic tone of the reverb, I guess. But there's so little control and, and the lack of, of uh, pre-delay is, again, definitely a deal breaker for me. So anyway, the overall winner for me is, again, the context. And even though, you know, if I had my druthers, I'd love to have the programmability from the collider put into the context and the two separate switches for reverb and delay uh, put into the context. This one, of course, does have the two separate switches, but it's got that little caveat of the confusion with delay tap versus delay on off versus selecting presets. And I still haven't quite figured out how to do that yet, how to, you know, reliably do one of the three when I want to do it. So that's sort of my, my uh, finding. I'll play out a little bit with the context a bit. Okay, so as I pointed out in the main video, the uh, Red Panda context ended up being the winner. And just to sort of sum up uh, what it was about that pedal that I really liked, it obviously gets the closest of any of the three to sounding like the LXP-1 to my ear, this warm, lush, enveloping kind of sound. The pre-delay works great. It's got that soft entry like the LXP-1, which to me is pretty essential. That's almost a deal breaker. Uh, number three is it's small, light, and compact, exactly what I was looking for. It does have MIDI and expression pedal outputs, should I ever want that. Um, and uh, this, again, it isn't, you know, maybe it's a little bit of a more frivolous thing, but it's got a super cool visual design, at least for my taste. I love the way it looks. I love the, the logo, the design of the pedal itself, the colors, the knobs, everything just, you know, makes me want to dive in and use that pedal. Um, there definitely were some minuses involved with this pedal, and I had to consider those too. Uh, uh, the uh, context only has one preset available, so in order to get two different sounds, you have to have one setting with the knobs set up, and then the second setting will be your preset. So that means that if I, if I want to have two sounds, when I stick it in my gig bag and pull it back out and set it up for the gig, I have to be careful that the knobs didn't get fiddled around with and that they're all in the right spot. So that's a little bit of a disadvantage. Um, another disadvantage of it is the delay settings are only available when pressing that shift button. So it requires a little bit of gymnastics to get into the delay settings. And then once you get back into the reverb settings, the knobs are not going to represent what the delay is doing and so forth. Um, I, I understand the compromise anytime you've got a pedal that does more than one thing. That's pretty much it. Uh, what I do appreciate about the context is that the reverb is the main event and the delay is kind of the extra thing, and that's exactly what I want for this. Um, not super versatile. It's mainly good at emulating those 80s digital reverb sounds, but again, that's exactly what I'm looking for. 
Um, one thing that I don't think I went over in the, in the main video that is actually pretty cool and I could envision myself maybe using this at some point in the future is the spring setting in the reverb also has tremolo available, which is really cool. Um, probably would only implement that if I had some kind of external MIDI controller so that I could, you know, call up numerous presets, but that is a really cool thing. I don't think any of the, the other two pedals didn't have tremolo, at least not that I remember. Um, uh, one other kind of slight disadvantage is stereo in and out on the context are only available using TRS plugs. Uh, I, you know, you can't, it doesn't have right and left in, right and left out. It just has one in, one out. Not a huge deal for me, as big of a deal as I made about the pedal has to be stereo. 90% of the time when I'm using it, it's probably going to be mono anyway. So that's not that huge of a deal. And if I do want to use it in stereo, I just have to break out a TRS adapter cable. Okay, now the, the second place kind of winner was the Source Audio Collider. Uh, a lot of things I liked about that pedal really versatile, lots of great algorithms for both delay and reverb, so it's really strong on both counts. And as I think I mentioned in the main video, I could see this being a really strong contender for an all-around re combination reverb delay pedal for a lot of people. It, it does a lot of things really well, would be a great on the pedal board kind of pedal, especially if you had external MIDI control so that you could you know, have more uh, control over calling up different presets and uh, maybe an expression pedal. Could see it being really a great uh, way to condense your pedal board down so you didn't have to have separate delay and reverb pedals. And, uh, you know, just great overall pedal. Uh, lots of flexibility with presets, even without MIDI. It's got f those four preset locations. Uh, it's got separate switches for the reverb and delay on and off, which is one thing the context didn't have. Uh, stereo in and out jacks, the context didn't have those. It does have the MIDI and expression out, plus software control, which I didn't even try out or get into. The minuses, the pre-delay was pretty iffy. It did have it, but the, the, the entry of the pre-delay was a little too harsh for my taste. Uh, the reverb for my ear didn't quite nail the LXP1 sound as well as the uh, Context did. Uh, it's bigger than the Context, although still pretty compact for what it is. Uh, the design itself, which again, a little frivolous on my part, but the design just didn't grab me the way that the uh, design of the Context did. It's a little kind of cold and analytical use looking for my taste. Uh, the other, one other thing, even though it does have the separate delay and reverb switches, the delay switch is kind of a multifunction switch, and I found it a little confusing to figure out how to just turn the delay on and off without accidentally triggering the uh, tap tempo or the preset switching. And then finally, we have the Universal Audio Delverb third place. Again, not because it isn't as good of a pedal as the other two, just for my specific uses. Um, some big pluses for this one, separate delay and reverb switches, and no confusion about that. Uh, you know, at least the way the pedal comes, it's just reverb on and off, delay on and off, that's it. And that's really a nice, straightforward thing. Uh, the, the whole thing is very simple and straightforward. You can set up the reverb on and off switch to, to double as tap tempo for the delay, and that could get a little bit more dicey, I guess. Um, but I never bothered with that. Uh, there's lots of delay options and controls, very full featured delay, uh, uh, probably on par with the Collider in terms of the delay, the different algorithms and the control you have over them. Um, it's got the external app that you can change algorithms for the reverb and delay, so that gives you a lot of different options without even having to go into MIDI. Um, it's got a pretty cool retro design. I, I, maybe like the uh, context a little bit better, but I definitely thought it was a cool design. It makes me, you know, want to pick it up and work with the pedal. Uh, great sounding vintage spring reverb in particular that I thought was particularly exceptional, and also the tape and analog delay sound. So if I was really like a vintage, you know, maybe I was like a surf rock player, I, it was really going for that vintage-y kind of thing, the, the old Fender 
sounds. Uh, this would be a great pedal if that's the only thing that I wanted out of a reverb and a delay pedal. And finally, the stereo ins and outs, like the Collider has. Uh, the minuses, and these were you know pretty significant ones for me. Only one reverb knob, no other controls. So when you're when you got your hands on the pedal, there's only you know there's nothing you can do with the reverb other than just turn the level up and down. Um, no pre-delay on the, any almost any of the reverbs that were available on any of the app presets. There were I think one or two, but none uh, and the hall sounds that I liked the most that came the closest to sounding like the LXP1. Um, I think I mentioned in the main video that the the default reverb that comes with it was some kind of a, a reverb from the late 70s. And I found out doing some more reading that it was actually a Lexicon 224, which is uh, a real state of the art, you know, reverb from the late 70s and one that a lot of people really love. So it's kind of, you know, that maybe that's why it came close to me to, to getting that LXP1 sound. But the lack of free delay on any of the Hall reverbs was definitely, you know, a no-go for me. Um, the pedal itself is kind of big and clunky, which even though that, you know, gives you a secure sense of this thing is built like a tank and isn't going to break, <clears throat> I'm looking for something that's light and easy to carry. So that's another thing that was a little bit of a minus for me. Um, and then of course, no presets at all. And the programmability is limited to changing algorithms on the app. Um, I'm sure if you, you know, had a MIDI, uh, set up, you could change presets that way. I didn't get into that, so I don't even know for sure. So that's basically my rundown on the three pedals. I didn't really examine a whole lot of the other functions of any of the three pedals, just kind of superficially, and they all have things that they're really good at, and I love that, but for my particular uses, uh, the context is definitely the winner. Thanks, and thanks for watching. I hope this has been informative to somebody out there, and don't forget to like and subscribe. But the lack of rundown killer was uh, definitely was a damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it. Damn it. Damn it, 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 damn it,